Hi, you're watching Saturday in the Woodworking Shop with Andrew Pitts, where we talk things woodworking. Well, hi there. It's July, and uh, before I start, I might just point out that I made Mr. July for the Artisan Center of Virginia catalog or calendar, and I'm pretty happy about that. I was on a forum this week and I spent a little time uh, trying to answer a question of a fella. He, he wanted to know uh, if he works in an unheated uh, and unconditioned workshop um, and he buys kiln dried lumber and he's on the east coast, uh, is that a waste of money because the, the lumber will absorb some moisture from the air? There's a document from the uh, Forest Products Laboratory, and um, it's called Equilibrium Moisture Content of Wood in Outdoor Locations in the United States and Worldwide. If you're a serious woodworker, it's good information for you to know because it kind of answers all those questions about how dry is air dry, how dry will my wood get inside my shop, because if you don't have dry wood, uh, you're in trouble. I want to just kind of share a little story with you. Back when I was first starting in woodworking, it was in the late 70s, and I had a garage workshop in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. I was in the Navy at the time, and uh, although I was at sea, it seems like all the time, somewhere along the line, I did have time to make a dining room table. And I made it out of some sort of mahogany. I, I can't even tell you what kind. It was something I was able to get locally. And uh, I didn't know anything about moisture content and drying wood or anything. To me, a board was a board. And uh, I was gonna make this nice looking table. So I made this nice long uh, seat six racetrack table out of mahogany. Um, I had a compressor with a spray gun and I, I sprayed lacquer on it and it really ended up beautiful. <clears throat> Soon after building the, the uh, table, we moved to Florida, to Orlando, Florida, where I was stationed. And of course, down in Orlando, your house is closed up all the time uh, because there's central air conditioning. So we're sleeping and it must have been four or five months after we moved down there and all of a sudden, bang, we heard this gunshot. And, you know, it scared, the, scared me to death. And uh, so we carefully got up and, you know, somebody's in the house. Well, it turns out what happened was this nice dining room table cracked. And it cracked right down the center in a gunshot fashion. I mean, it was loud. And, uh, you know, I scratched my head and finally came to realize what had happened was that the when I built this table, like I told you I didn't know anything about this stuff, I simply made a, an apron and I screwed and glued that apron to the top nice and firm so it wouldn't go anywhere. And the uh, problem is wood absorbing moisture or losing moisture is one of the most powerful forces in nature and the table top had started to shrink with all that dryness from the air conditioning and uh, finally it just had to give because I had glued it to the apron, I'd screwed it to the apron, it couldn't naturally move at all, it couldn't slide any on its own and so it cracked. And so that was my first big lesson in moisture control in, uh, in lumber. Of course, now, every time I build a piece of furniture, part of the building process is building in wood movement mechanisms. Somehow that wood has to be able to move as it gains and loses moisture throughout the year. But the real guts of this thing are two tables. Now, first of all, this table here, which I'm gonna reproduce on the bottom of your screen so you can see what it is, it shows a relationship of temperature and relative humidity of the air to equilibrium moisture content in the wood. Equilibrium moisture content is the moisture content that wood would have 
if it was at equilibrium with the existing relative humidity. So if you took a, a, a board and cut it off at the mill uh, and it's green and it's 100% moisture content and you brought it into your shop at 50% relative humidity and let it sit there for 10 years, eventually the board would lose all its moisture down to the equilibrium moisture content for 50% relative humidity. And if your shop was, say, an average of 70 degrees throughout the year, you could go to this table and say, okay, for 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity, the board is going to be 9.2% equilibrium moisture content, or that's the moisture content in the board is going to be 9.2%. It will be at equilibrium. Now it takes a long time for wood to, to reach this and so you know with my case I kiln dry in a solar kiln. So I get about six hours of sun a day and slowly, slowly, slowly the wood comes down. That in the summer uh, where I live um, with my air conditioning I usually see about 40 to 45 percent relative humidity and at 70 degrees, that's about 8.5% moisture content. So that's where my wood would like to be in the summer in my shop. In the winter, with a heat, and I usually see 30 to 35% relative humidity. And for 70 degrees, that's down around 6.2 to 6.9% moisture content. So I always say I want my wood coming out of the kiln to be between 6 and 8% moisture content because that's about the average of the equilibrium moisture contents of my air in my shop throughout the year. And my shop, by the way, I built it to replicate a home. The other table in this document that's really useful is called the equilibrium moisture content of wood exposed to outdoor atmosphere in U.S. locations. And what they do they list a whole bunch of different cities. So I can go ahead and I can look at, say, Virginia. So I'd say that, uh, you know, the lowest number I see here in my area is 11.3% equilibrium moisture content, and, the high, and that's in April, and the highest I would see would be around 13.7, uh, maybe, in uh, August. So we're talking the 11 to 13% moisture content for wood that is outdoors, under cover, not getting rained on, and not in direct sunlight. In other words, air-dried lumber. So I always say that around here, when I air dry, I'm going to see between 12 and 14 percent equilibrium moisture content when the wood is finally dry. And I found that when I measure it, it's really pretty, pretty accurate, okay? Now, when I put the wood in the kiln, I go to 6 to 8 percent moisture content, so it'll be good for inside the house. Here's another interesting thing, though, that would really, in the case of the question that was asked, is what happens if I buy kiln-dried lumber and then keep it in my shop that is not air-conditioned or, or heated? Well, wood exhibits something called hysteresis. What that means is, is that when you dry the wood down, it gets to a certain equilibrium moisture content, which is actually a higher value than if you had wood that was really dry and you let the moisture content come up. Which means that if you buy your kiln dry lumber, you don't have to worry as much about it absorbing a lot of moisture because of the hysteresis uh, effect is going to going to kind of slow that down. And so you maybe have a good amount of time to be able to build your piece and you know, get it into a conditioned space before it, it, you know, really has absorbed a bunch of moisture. Another good reason to buy kiln dry lumber, of course, is because the heat in the kiln drying will kill the powder post beetles, which, the larva for the powder post beetles, which means that later on you won't have a little exit hole appearing in your chair <laughs> that you just sold to somebody. It does take a long time to dry wood, even in a kiln it takes a long time, but especially sitting in your workshop, don't worry too much if you get a little humid in your shop, as long as it's not sitting there for months, you know, you're going to be okay. If it's sitting there for months, you know, you might want to consider investing in a dehumidifier and dehumidify that little space that you're, that you're uh, you know, storing your wood. So I hope that helps you some. Mm -hmm.